Hello everybody and welcome back to BIOS Megafauna 2. We have been entering turn 9 and things are getting interesting once again. Actually they've been interesting all the time and now they are interesting. -er. There's been lots of competition on the board and lots of creatures have died. Things have evened out a bit. Uh, greens sort of more concentrated in this continent. Orange is a bit in the middle, and white's taken over kind of everything, but mostly the right side. So uh, now we've got a movement of Gondwana upwards, because Gondwana does not have any latitude dice. Nothing happens. Uh, then we've got something happening in latitudes one, a climax and six. So we actually have growth here. It's got loads and loads more trees on the ground. So that means there's a lot more oxygen in the atmosphere. Organ limits for creatures, uh, for animals have increased to seven. They have four actions again. And this is the Pangea breakup icon. You can see it as it's got three. Uh, it's 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 uh, it's divided into three parts. That's because this only happens. I did not do this. I forgot to do this last turn. And these things collided. Might have changed something. I hope not. Uh, I think I did talk about it, but if these things collide, then these, these discs are liberated. So they should not have been there to begin with. I don't think it made a difference. No, they had three actions anyhow. And the plants had four actions anyhow. So that's fine. Again, a mistake by me. I, I don't think there's a turn... I, I haven't played a single turn of this game where I have not made a mistake. And... I don't think that trend's going to stop uh, at any point because there's just so, so much to think about if you're playing all three players at least if you're doing it live if I if I took some more time it might be different so Pangea is breaking up meaning uh, we actually have to select all these things oh god because this is a, con a continent made up of at least three cratons. And it is made up of three cratons. So everything is breaking up and rafting is once again going to be uh, at least necessary and maybe even impossible. Alright, so that's what it looks like now. Ooh, that wasn't good. That didn't take everything it should have. All right. Uh, this should be a bit more low. Yep. Okay. So that's what the continents look like right now. Um. What does this mean? This also means that we are getting latitude dice back. So this thing's got a latitude of four, and this one also does. So once again, we have four continents broken up into pieces, and everything is a bit harder to get to. Uh, we've got clouds going into the atmosphere. Once again, making it into a hothouse. A super plume launched from the D layer. Uh, I guess it's a number, but I can't read it. Of the basal mantle may have caused the Illawarra magnetic reversal, ending 50 million years of stability and cosmic ray shielding. Pangea shattered into LIPs as it was impinged by the plume head. The fallout from the plume winter may have caused the PTR extinctions and long-term oceanic hypoxia. So the magnetic field is changing. Okay. 
It sounds like a dramatic description, but say for the breakup, not that much happened. Now, uh, do we have enough oxygen in the atmosphere for there to be fires? Because that's what rust needs. Atmospheres tend towards zero pressure as they are locked up by ge geochemistry, which has depleted the atmospheres of Earth, Mars and Luna. For instance, oxygen is sequestered through rusting oxidation with carbon pyrite or other receptors. This density redu reduction greatly lowers the greenhouse effect. So, so we have something that lowers the greenhouse effect. We've got uh, green once again decides they don't want... why is this here? Why is this here? I'm just gonna cheat. I'm going I'm going to cheat. I'm going to put these on here because for some reason Oh right, it was liberated last turn. So these guys would have had to go extinct. Right, no harm done. No harm done. Again, another another mistake. There's just so much going on. I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting things. So we would actually like for because we are green. Uh, for this disc to leave, go up here. Sadly, we can only do one, and endangering this species because we cannot endanger white, who I think is still ahead. I mean, I'm deliberately not counting every single cripple to make it a bit more interesting for myself. So, we've got something going from the atmosphere to the clouds. So, it's still warm. The climate was kind of stable this turn, even though quite a few things happened. It was mostly the Pangea breakup that's going to influence this turn. Climate is still warm, strip stays. Alrighty then. Uh, Black goes first, black does not exist, white. White's turn. Let's bring out the mutations again. Now, white is kind of everywhere. And white, right now I have an eye on white's worms because they've got three of those creeples, they've got three of these, and they've got three fish. So it's just not enough to be able to purchase the farther away market cards. So the worms on here, they are pretty competitive. The green worms, when it comes to what exactly? No matter what, I can swoop in here and chuck green out. And here. Right, the, uh, the green worms, they have two green cubes. Well, these guys have as many green cubes as they have size. So, that means we are, I'm probably just going to do another resize action. We're moving everything up to size 3. Is that allowed? No, this this guy's actually only allowed to be size 2. Mm, we're doing it anyhow. Because we can't populate that much. And we are going to populate the worms as we have planned. And the fishies. They all have enough blue cubes to be able to populate quite a lot. So we are emptying these reservoirs. There's still only three actions because things moved around a bit. So. We have white's turn and green's turn. Green's turn. 
green sees themselves being outcompeted on the, on this cartoon here by white. They know that this is going to happen, but uh, because of uh, white's crazy mutations here, they need two green mutations. We've got four actions. Can we buy two green mutations? We actually can. Mm. See, in a normal game, I would not have made this mistake as white. I would have actually thought about this happening. Well, here, let's just be brutal and mean. Oh, 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 never mind that. I'm putting this back. I'm actually just... Oh, I couldn't have taken the second card. I couldn't have taken this one. So that's not a problem, but this is the problem. We can promote this. Rotate it. Put on a monster. And we've got six green dice. Uh, six green cubes. So... We don't no, no longer need this. This was three actions. We bought one, we promoted one, and we got rid of a cube. All right, three, four, five, six, seven. We would actually like to get rid of another cube, but we can't really do that. Mm, do we want another mutation? We're picking this one. Because this archetype wants to survive and it's going to try to develop tools. Next turn it can do this by promoting onto this side and attaching itself over here. This means uh, this species has now got two emotions in their personality because they have a speech and uh, they have speech. They can now produce tools. They have speech but they don't have language. So it's that's what they would have. They can then take a tool and start hunting any one of the other uh, species types. So uh, Green's archetype is actually going to be competitive again very soon. But not right now because they have not got enough actions. They bought this, they promoted it, they bought this. They have one more action. So we can develop tools as green. Uh, but green does not yet know what they will want to eat in the future. So that might not be the smartest thing. Because there's not that many herbivores established at this point that can be eaten. Uh, green could try to get over here somehow. They would manage. Actually, yeah, they're gonna do that. They're gonna eat snails. It gives them another basal cube. It's very dangerous what I'm doing right here because they could lose it all. But green has been behind for the entire game, so they are kind of desperate to get things working. Good. That's four actions for green. And then we have three actions for orange. And orange... What would orange like? First we have to put the mutation stack back. In order. Um, orange has got three of these. It's got two of those. And it doesn't have that many worms. So it can actually develop its worms quite a bit. There are five creeples, five worm creeples. Uh, in the in the stack and we really 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 don't want to die so 
we are going to try and adapt them to become competitive predators. One, two actions. Can I take some red cubes? Because there's so much forests on the ground now, the red, the red cubes are quite a lot stronger than the yellow cubes, save for in the oceans. And... Yeah, and we are of course going to populate for three. I hope they can get far enough. I did not check that, but we will see. So now we've got white going first when it comes to population. Dispersal, it's actually called. So the white guys made sure they were the best herbivores, but uh, then green swooped in, got this crazy monster token, the vascular roots. So now we've got this weird animal with, uh, with this weird plant, I should say, with nitrogen root nodules, flowers, cheeks. See, this is where it stops making sense. And roots. So it's a plant with roots, giant, so it's pretty much a tree at this point. But it's a carnivorous tree, and it's it's very carnivorous. So it's, it's crazy. And it's got cheeks. So, yeah, that's what it does. So we are not going to outcompete these guys as herbivores. And so I guess all that's left is trying to somehow survive. Uh, we can move one, two, three, four spaces. So we are actually going to go here, outcompete the green archetype. We are going to. Uh, this is latitude 5, right? Yeah, so this is once again moved away, uh, this is once again moved away from everything, every other part of the world. It's once again a Galapagos situation, we can't go up here like I planned. And this is a bit of a mess for poor Mr. Green. So, yeah, for poor Mr. White, I should say. I guess this works. We can eat the other green guy. They're pretty much eating each other all around. And now there's not enough space left. So I'm going to outcompete my own archetype here. Because that way the archetype can actually mutate better and maybe turn into something useful at some point later on. Now we've got Green's turn. And Green, once again, is not populating because they don't have enough species. They don't have enough good cards. They have more actions than everybody else. They are allowed more mutations, more organs. But uh, despite that, they are trailing behind this game. They're just not drawing the right cards and they pretty much they're, they are saving up these guys. They are saving up destroyed creeples so they can actually buy something and speciate away. Good, so it's Orange's turn. Did I actually... Do everything white had? No, I did not. White still has to get its fish somewhere. Now, white's fish. Can they compete against... What exactly? Could compete against the green archetype in the swamp. Uh, in swamps, they are not competitive whatsoever. Okay. Never mind that. 
So we are not going to outcompete white as fish here. We can't swim over to this continent because it's too far away. We can start eating some other fish. We, we might be able to outcompete when it comes to yellow cubes. But not green ones, I suspect. I suspect orange's fish have more green cubes. No, they only have one. Uh, but they're the same size, but skeletal number is lower for orange. So orange would barely win this contest, so we're just going to go carnivore right away. So we don't have to deal with that. And we're going down here and over there. Again, I'm not sure if this is allowed to be there without a carbon where they can feed off of, but I'm, I'm just leaving it there. If anybody can answer the question, I'd be grateful to know. Good. Now, finally, we get to orange. Just going to populate some of these worms. They are now carnivorous. They, are, they have two red cubes. Who else has two red cubes? Uh, everything by green. And green is bigger. So green would win, but white, white has no red cubes, not, not enough at least. So everything white can be eaten, the white worms can be eaten, but the white worms are down here. And the green worms, the green worms are still too strong. So I guess uh, this adaptation was not enough. But uh, in the next turn, we might be able to promote these or buy more of them. Uh, just making sure these are correct. Yeah, there's, there's going to be something available. We might have to snatch this up. And then orange is, being, uh, is going to be able to be competitive against the green, the green worms. Though right now, we are already eating them. So that's not actually an issue. Are we going to be able to outcompete anything useful? No. This is problematic. I think I just speciated without cause. Yeah. These mountains are in the way. Nothing can live here. We can't try to outcompete our snails. Who wins this? I, I want to see. I don't actually want to see that. Who wins this? Oh, we're not actually competing against the snails. We're competing against white. Oh, that's fine. It works. Um, we, we are chucking our snails out there, but that's actually a good thing because then we have four of them and we can buy better mutations for them. And I. Th I think this works, yeah. Green can't eat the worms. Well, that's perfect. So we actually have as much space taken up as is possible. And this one goes back into the stock. And we do want white out of here, even though we lose the creeple. So that's fine. The snails can always uh, raft over again. Unendanger these because it does not make sense. And we've done our turn. We check for all the competition happening. This one gets endangered. That's why this one gets endangered as well. Um, you've got green competing against white. So they're just moving upwards. Uh, orange, not green. Orange. How can I mix those up? 
Orange worms are not plant eaters. Yep. Oh wait, I, I discarded the snails that were here. Never mind, these guys have to go. And there should actually be an orange snail still left endangered. And what else we got? Got lots of peaceful coexistence, carnivorous peaceful coexistence. These guys are probably going to die. So now it's Wise turn to save his guys. They can't, however, because they can't raft anywhere and there's no space left. So these are this unendangered, discarded, unendangered, discarded. These are discarded. Because again, the archetypes can't eat this shape, so this shape wins any contests. And we are at the end of the turn. Let's go into the next one. Turn number 10. So after this turn, things are going to be scored once more. Yep. You see the, the era deck is now empty. This is the last turn of era 2. It's still hot. And we've got flood basalt traps and denitrifying bacteria bloom. The flood basalt traps. Flood basalt, uh, big flood basalt volcanoes such as the Siberian traps or the Paran uh, Itendeka traps emitted up to 3 million cubic kilometers of lava and dumped 13,000 gigatons of uh, carbon into the atmosphere in less than a million years. That compares with 720 gigatons carbon in the atmosphere today, perhaps a third of which is attributed to humans. So we've got quite a massive greenhouse going on. And here, what do we have? Denitrifying bacteria bloom. Denitrifying bacteria convert nitrates into nitrogen, which is unusable for life, resulting in a nitrogen famine. A bloom of such bacteria may have caused the end Potomian extinction during the Middle Cambrian, 520 million years ago, which slashed approximately 40% of marine green. This is not as terrible as it sounds because you see the bacteria icon up there and uh, you see it's not active. So maybe it's going to be active. So let's not count our chickens before they uh, make eggs. Uh, yeah. So uh, we've got a crater happening on this place. So we're we're throwing our second die of the game on six. So there's a crater happening here, endangering these two marine animals. Green is definitely happy about this. Though green is probably out of competition because they just do not have enough species to populate the places. So there's a volcano coming up from here. And then we've got Gondwana actually moving in here again. Boom. Whoosh. Okay. And this, uh, this thing's this thing's gone. That's uh, that had to be gone. I can't survive something like this. Uh, da, da, da. Right. Again, I keep missing things. It's just that on the vassal board, it's it's hard to 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 keep seeing everything. So uh, now we've got the interesting case that there's no more carbon left in the atmosphere, unlike what the card actually told us. Huh? And that's uh, pretty much why the Medea Supervillain gets to decide where the disc comes from. And since there's a lot of green here, we would love for there to not be a mountain here. It still has to go here. Gets rid of the forest. There's a mountain here. And lots of cripples are endangered. 
because of the continental collisions. And this one loses its latitude die. So now once again we have a bigger continent and these creatures can swarm out and start competing. There's three burrowing animal species competing for the same space so it's gonna get interesting once again. Uh, we're having some CO2 go into the atmosphere. Now we are definitely picking these because we do not want to die. So these are unendangered. So there was not actually a mountain there. Easy come, easy go. So the bacteria thing does not happen. So there is no DNA check. And no mutation check, uh, no, no cubes lost and such. And we've got cloud cover. Do we have cloud cover? No, we do not have enough oxygen in the atmosphere. Otherwise, we could have taken all the green disks and put them up there if we wanted to as the Medea supervillain. So I guess there's something to be said for putting disks into the, the cloud cover. But I guess the person who puts disks into cloud cover is not going to want to pull the gun uh, the gun trigger on here. While if the plant actually puts disks in there, they lose all these... Uh, they, they don't have enough organs left, so... Yeah. So this card does not do anything at all whatsoever. Now it's Orange's turn. And Orange is spread out. It's becoming quite a complicated situation. Orange wants to compete here and they know they are not really able to compete as herbivores though actually there's so many predators they will be and since there's lots of forests they do stand a chance if they get some more red organs so they're gonna get a red organ they have th three actions yeah so they're gonna get a red organ where did it go there we go. And hmm, these are massive. This brainstem is a massive mutation. This is gonna do something, all right. And we've got three red cubes, so we are quite competitive. And we will populate. And then I will actually try to do something with my other creatures here. Do the snail stand a chance? Where did everything go? Okay. Uh, what about these snails? Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're the only ones that can eat other snails. So, uh, population for snails is that gonna help? One, two, five. So they can move on to this continent. And because they're quick, I think I'm going to take these and uh, take over these other biomes, the yellow biomes. So I'm actually populating snails. Because finally there's a way to get into Siberia. And that's three actions and it's White's turn. White also has a ton of species. Not every species can even take an action at this point. We're gonna check mutations. And this is pretty much what we want. Okay, yellow mutation. Promoting it to this side. Gets a size one die. Kind of running out of space for, for these animals. Gets two yellow, three blues, and a green cube. And with that, the reservoir is empty. Every blue cube that now happens to be uh, taken. Uh, 
one can take from any other player. So there's chain transfer going on and that's going to be a competition in and of itself, complicating things even further. You can see there's a red atrophy cube here. These glider creatures, they are fast, they're not aggressive, but, uh, well, we don't have any red cubes, so there's no atrophy happening at all. This speciation means uh, we're going to have to get rid of a white archetype. I think these guys died last turn. Yeah. Again, didn't see. Where are all the white archetypes? Are they all dead? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. So. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I think green has the other one. So without realizing it, uh, the white archetype has actually become extinct. So uh, this whole speciation thing we did not happening, at least not in the way we planned. We have our first extinct creature. In two plays of my game I have not seen a creature go extinct, but I, I did assume it was kind of common in a normal game. And well now I actually have to deal with this. So. Uh, I'm able to resurrect something as a kiwi. So if I uh, resize one of those creatures uh, to a size they are not allowed to be at, I can exchange uh, the card for my archetype and all the creeples with my archetype. So if I wanted to, I could resurrect my archetype like that. But it's still worth a victory point. And. It, it wasn't very strong. I, I did not focus on making the archetype better and it lost a lot of mutations. So it's a bit sad to see it all go, but it's, it's no big deal. So that said, we have to think of a different way of doing things. So right now, the space where we are not is over here and the worms they have a big problem and uh, there's too many worms so I think I'm still going to buy this card but for the worms now what this does is we get a yellow cube over here and speciate speciate so we've getting we're getting yellow yellow blue blue green and another green cube it's going to be size one so i could have kept the cloned cube i had and these are our first birds we're endangering this guy because he cannot eat birds. So we've got one, two for buying and speciating, and we are buying three birds to swoop out onto the landscape and hopefully give us enough creatures to gain some victory points at the end of this round. Good, now white's turn and white. They see this as a great opportunity of getting their worms out. No, they do not. They only have... What are the white worms? We've got one, two, three, four. Five. Wait, uh, did I do orange already? I did orange, I did white. We are not talking about green. But where are the white worms? One, two, three, four. One, 
two, three, four, five. This is not a worm. This is a. Uh, there's one. Green has stolen one. Uh, orange doesn't have one, do they? There's a piece missing in in my game, in my virtual game. Uh, I don't know where it is. It's everybody's supposed to have seven creeples. Where did they go? And I'm I'm not allowed to clone them either because this vessel implementation implementation is a bit uh, dodgy. So I guess we're playing with one dice white creeple. Hmm. It's not much I can do. I can just imagine it being there. Do I really suck at counting this much? One, two, three, four. The fifth one was on here. The sixth one is on here. And the seventh one is nowhere to be found. So uh, this one, this was on here, and it's speciated. Did I put it somewhere weird? Again, I apologize for the confusion. I guess we're just going to keep playing and ignore this uh, thing. We'll just use an archetype or something to replace this. Okay. So there, sh there should be two white ones. So we bought this card, we promoted it, and we speciated it into birds. Uh, what do we. We have these gliders, so we, we're not that flight capable, but flight capable enough to count. And then we've got green left, and green is all out of arch. It's not out of archetypes, so we can actually buy some mutations now, if possible. We cannot get anything of this row again because there are no carnivorous plant symbols, which is why we wanted them when we had when when we had the chance. So we can choose between these three. Getting some blue cubes. Saliva. This gives lots of red cubes. Where are the green ones going to be competing anyhow? They're going to compete for yellow cubes. Here they're going to compete for green cubes. And this is where it all gets very complex. So I, th I think I'm actually ending the game here. This turn... Nah, I'll just, I'll just play till the bitter end. I'll just... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Still, it's getting quite complex, so I, I have to think a bit more about my turns. Uh, we've got orange we are competing with, the orange snails we have to check out, uh, we have to check out if they are good plant eaters, we have to check the white snails, if they can eat plants, they can. Our archetype still has got this, uh, uh, the crazy, the crazy mutated thing. What we can actually do is try to end the game. We can try to end the game. Uh, because what we did last turn was we promoted this here. And I I am actually eligible to pick up a tool. Uh, because I have this purple emotion. I've got the one side and the other side of it. Speech. Speech and nest building. So we are allowed uh, to 
take any mutation we want, any 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 tool we want, and uh, we can then either uh, eat these creatures or make sure we are never hunted by these creatures. So uh, both of these will happen. So we become sort of a super predator. And what do we want to eat? Well, what is there the most of? There are a lot of fish, uh, white fish here. And we would actually be allowed to go into the water with our archetypes if we have the diving bell, uh, the diving bell tool. What we could also think about eating, however, uh, would be these worms. But there's already a lot of worm eating competition going on, so we're going for the diving bell. Though we could make sure that we are not eaten by the worms. Yeah, we are actually going to take the stick. And we are also going to take the diving bell. Okay. So because green uh, is incapable uh, of speciating any further, uh, they will have to try and pressure other players out of the game. And they will do this by um, doing this uh, speech mutation, which they did last turn. And also buying themselves uh, this it gives them a green cube i will immediately flip this to the side rotate it i see i see okay so there is balancing going on here there are issues we cannot get the second tool Uh, we cannot get the second tool. Come on, come on, just give me, just give me one. There. Uh, because we cannot promote this thing because there's a size limitation on it. It's still an okay buy though. No, it's not. It's not. Let's not buy it. We're not buying it. We're not buying it. Rewind, rewind. Oh, oh God. Okay. What just happened there? And, and now it's all back. Now, now the now the red cubes have vanished. Are they on these cubes? Yes, they are somehow. Yeah, here the red cubes are. Never mind then. Okay. Um. Mm, mm, mm. What are we gonna do? We are back to square one. We cannot develop this because of the size limit. We cannot develop this because of the size limit. So we cannot end the game right here. We wanted to, but we can't. So what about this creature? Uh, these worms are actually doing very good. They're actually doing very, very good. This this guy still got the stick because they have one of those mutations. So, um, 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 with this guy, we can actually buy any of these and use them. Oh no, we are we are also size six. So. Uh, This mutation, for some reason, actually makes sense to buy. We get two of these. And promoting it. I'm actually just doing it, uh, doing this one for educational purposes because it's not actually good. No, it doesn't even work. Never mind. Um, you see these other emoticons? I haven't really used them. Well, uh, this actually means I get to have a blue emotion and I get to buy blue cards at half price. So I could have bought the blue cards here 
for uh, three instead of six. So it would have been possible to buy them. I am messing up everything. I am not allowed to buy this. I'm not allowed. This is such a complex thing. Ugh. Um, okay, we're just going to get this then. One. I can't promote it. I'm too big. Being this size has, has its disadvantages, I'm starting to see. I might not have wanted to go up to size six. That was that was a that was a bit of a bad move. So we're just going to buy this mutation. And we're going to speciate uh, to populate outwards. Use all these guys. But not before buying some random stuff. Two, four, we can't we can only afford one. We'll afford this one. Now this is more important for competition. So here we go. Don't let me forget the cubes. Holding all the cubes. And there we have it, Green's turn. It was it was more complex than it should have been. And here we are. Red or orange is taking their turn. And da, 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 da. yeah, we still got time. We are moving out with our super snails. Two, three, four, five. The archetype is still alive here, right? Yeah. The snails are fanning up. They are able to be competitive in yellow environments. So this is latitude four. We are allowed to move one, two, three, four, five. I think we are allowed to move five. One, two, three, four, five. That's a bit of a problem. Let, let's check all the other, other places first. So here we're going to be carnivores. And yeah, there's no other space to be. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. We are immediately endangered because we are not allowed to live in the water. But we can use this cripple as another model. And can we outcompete anything interesting? One, two, three. We can go anywhere around here. These white birds. They are herbivores, so I can't out herbivore them. Did this come from here? It come from here. No, this things are moving around in weird ways. I'll just. So, so this was here, I'm assuming. Um, ah, and here I, by accident, put things on top of each other. Okay. Maybe that's where the white creeple went. We'll see. Um, yeah, so we're just going here. We're probably just going to get out competed here. Oh, we're going down here. Wonderful. These guys can't eat me. And then we've got some worm guys. That 
this also needs to be gone. My worms, can they outcompete anything at anything? They are the crappiest worms. Um, They have one yellow disc. No. So this would just die if I put them anywhere. So I'm not going to put them anywhere. Good. Next up is white. And white is doing the bird thing. Which comes as a bit of a surprise for poor orange. The birds are eating all the stuff they wanted to eat. Pretty much screwing their entire plan. So haha ha, orange, you have been messed with. Though they still got the, the snail population that they made, so it kind of balances itself out. And we've got these green stick creatures that are now able to eat worms. So the, these are allowed to move five, six, seven, eight, eight spaces, massive amounts. So they are moving one, two, three, four, five, six. Do we outcompete these guys? Of course we do. We, our plants are quick. So we're outcompeting these guys. Competing these guys. And we can try to outcompete white birds as plant eaters. Yeah, I think we'll manage to do that. So, now contests. I'm probably going to fail again, but uh, there we go. These two get endangered because nobody can eat this guy. Then, this was endangered because of the mountain that was here. And then the mountain got taken away. So, um, nothing can eat this guy, so this gets endangered, this gets endangered. Then the white birds versus the orange worm. And the birds are much better plant eaters, so these guys get endangered because they cannot eat the birds. Same thing here. And same thing here. Now at this spot, uh, that's a carnivore contest, we're doing carnivore contests after the herbivore contests have happened. Um, da -dum, da -da, da -da. Right, there's nothing actually happening here. I think I got all of them. I'm, I, I, actually, I think I haven't gotten all of them because I always miss some. But there you go. And now we've got the carnivore contests. So that would be that one that I told you about. Green versus orange. And it's the green archetype. You never want to mess with the green archetype. Versus the orange worms. And the orange worms have actually got three red cubes. Which finally outcompetes green. So this was not actually a good idea. Green should have gone somewhere else. Because of these mutations, they actually saved him. And this gets endangered. We move on. Now, endangered species. Who still has white cubes? This archetype has got white cubes. And does white have any white cubes? White does not. So the only person with white cubes at this point is the green archetype, everything else dies off immediately. The 
snails here as well. These guys. Oh, that was that was harsh. That was that was a harsh turn for orange. Green still feels kind of underrepresented as well. So green is actually allowed to eat worms. But there are no edible worms left because they have been replaced by birds. So the tool we picked for green was not actually a very good choice. If they had nets, they could start uh, attacking the birds. If they had diving bells, they could start eating the fish. But they can do none of these things. There's suddenly no more worms left on the planet, even though they seem to be taking over everything. So now what we're left with is this picture. Um, my computer tells me it's not fast enough. It's probably because I'm recording. So uh, the video's already gone on an hour, but we still have to do scoring. So let's let's do this real quick. And uh, this one, nice. So we've got. Let's let's go orange first. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Then we've got white. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So they are still ahead of the pack. And green. One, two, three, four. Oh, there's a contest. There's a contest. Losing this one too, aren't they? The orange worms. I always miss something. Yeah, but they're losing this one too, so it does not make a difference. One, two, three, four, five, six. A pathetic six creatures on the board for green. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just to make sure I did not miscount. Yeah, that did not go green's way. But they've got seven and eight. They've got two mutualism mutations that give them two additional cripples, which still does not make a difference between orange, because orange is still too far ahead. That's the tally. So orange gets uh, two, gets one victory point. White gets two of them. So white is doing the best out of all our competitors. Got the most victory points, the most species on the board, the most creatures on the board. They are a force to be reckoned with. Now, what happens? We are going to take four cards from here and this card. And as soon as this card gets drawn, that's the last turn of the game. You can see there's a mutation check. So if at the end of the game you guys, uh, your, your creatures have too many organs, they're gonna die off. So you wanna make sure that your organ number is all right. And we are taking four other cards. So we're taking four. One, two, three, four, five. And this should shuffle automatically. You can see it picks a different card every time we draw. Yeah. So now we pick the card for the next turn. Let's see. It's not over yet. The Ring of Fire and the substrate revolution. So this has been it for turn, what was it? Turn 10. And we're going to enter the next era, era number three, the last few turns of the game in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. It has been a pleasure. Hope you enjoyed it. And this has been it for me. Have a nice day.